With the right-to-work legislative debate entering its second week in Wisconsin, a lot has been said about what the law will and will not do. Vincent Vernuccio of the Mackinac Center says it's all about giving workers the freedom to choose whether or not to join a union and still keep their job, even if they work in a union shop. What it does is it takes away a union's ability to get a worker fired for not paying them. It doesn't affect collective bargaining any other way. Workers, unions, their employers, they can still negotiate over wages, hours, benefits, anything they could before right to work, they're going to be able to do after right to work, except for saying, well, if a worker doesn't support a union, that worker has to be let go. Unions should not be able to compel their, work, uh, their member support. They should have to earn workers' voluntary support, just as any uh, private business or private uh, membership organization does. James Shirk from the Heritage Foundation talks about what happened to one worker in a non-right-to-work state who refused to let his union push him around. This happened to Michael Romanchuk. Yeah, he worked uh, in a uh, Pepsi bottling plant. He got hired there in June of 2013. And nine months after getting hired, he found out that he was represented by a union. And he found this out because the union sent him a letter saying, pay us you know, full dues and all the back dues you haven't been paying, or we're going to have you fired. Well, he hadn't even noticed the representation. He saw no value from it, and he refused to give in to that coercion. And so the union had him fired. Unions should not be able to compel their, work, uh, their member support. They should have to earn workers' voluntary support, just as any uh, private business or private uh, membership organization does. What we find when unions can compel people uh, to join them is that they don't care as much about providing quality goods and services. These experts also pointed to data that shows right-to-work states perform better economically than non-right-to-work states. You're seeing higher job growth, you're seeing higher wage growth, you're seeing lower unemployment, you're seeing more people moving to the right-to-work states. So on an aggregate, right-to-work states are doing a lot better than the non-right-to-work states. The Wisconsin Senate passed right-to-work last Thursday, and the Assembly is taking it up this week. For the McIver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky.